Today I'm going to be taking a look at um, this three quarter view piece um, and there are a lot of issues with this piece and I'm going to break them down uh, piece by piece and um, I'm going to use our handy dandy portrait studio to, uh, to help us make sense of this stuff. So I'm going to take a picture of um, portrait studio in this angle. Let me delete the ground. And um, I'm going to try to match it. The head, the neck rig will be back some sometime soon, uh, but for now I have to use this. All right, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a lot of that, and um, so I'm just trying to make sure we're matching. And basically, what's happening in your piece, and I'll I'll, I'll diagram it in a second is that you're showing too much for a three quarter view. Because take a look at what happens when we have a three quarter view in this angle, low angle, so we can see the nostrils. If you can see the nostrils, you're a worm, okay? So we're in worm's eye view. Automatically we're on low angle if we can see the camera, uh, the nostrils, the camera's low. So when you're looking at, let's say, just perfectly symmetrical face. Take a look at what happens. So let's say it's perfectly symmetrical below angle, right? Take a look at what happens to this far side as we rotate. Right? Suddenly it's shrunken. And now it's even thinner. Look at that. And then all of a sudden there's a point where the nose breaches the line. Right? even if the cheekbones are both prominent. So what happened with yours is that you didn't do that. The cheekbone was like, hell nah. <laughs> the, cheek, the cheekbone was like, absolutely not, absolutely fucking lutely not. And the cheekbone just rose up to deny the nose the, fact, the chance to breach the, the cheek. So the biggest fix for this, apart from, you know, everything else, light environment, color, all that, um, is that we just have to just stop the cheek from riding up like that. So let me show you. So that's, that's, that's one step closer to fixing this piece. One, just one small step closer. All right. We need a lot more than this to correct this piece because at the moment what's happening is that I mean, if you had to go backward and not do it in this type of way, to, to rotate the face back, it would just be too much editing for the, for the critique. But um, to just allow the cheek to be visible in that slight three-quarter view, so a more mild three-quarter view, then we would just go back, uh, adjust our reference, and make it work. But right now what's happening is that it's not side view, it is three-quarter view. So it's not that I can do this. It's not that what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep everything you put in while also keeping it symmetrical. It's that the head itself is not structured. So what happens when students attempt a complicated perspective like this is that they do everything at once. They don't do everything in pieces. So first, just, just to make it easier for your mind to grasp it, rotate just the head in this in this angle. Forget the face. So that's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to just factor out the face. Alrighty? And I'm just going to make the head rotated. Alright, so apart from all the other fixes I did, you know, that quick little fix with the nose, I'm just going to rotate the head. I'm gonna, I'm going to make the head look like it makes sense. So when you've barely done three-quarter view studies, you've barely graduated a front view 14-day challenge, you've um, <clears throat> only recently dabbled in color and a little bit too early because you haven't worked in grayscale long enough, and you attempt a perspective tilt like this that is this complicated, you're going to fail because you don't know how to plan it. Basically, you asked someone who's never planned a birthday party to plan uh, a freaking conference. Do you know what I'm saying? Is that this person has no experience planning anything bigger 
than a front view portrait. All of a sudden they have to plan this multi, multi angle portrait. And not just that, manage beauty and introduce color. That's a lot to throw on yourself. Um, I know your mind is inspired and inspiration is a beautiful thing. It's good to not lose it. But to, to be inspired by something is to be given like this beautiful little idea. And you guys treat your ideas like crap because you guys don't actually plan around your ideas. You don't really just take a moment to think about how to execute it. If it's that important to you, then take some time and think about it. But you guys just rush right in. Oh, I got to capture this smoke girl. And you just do whatever you want um, at lightning speed without any experience and without any knowledge. And you're, you fail because of that. So in art, there's a lot of planning as much as any other subject. Art isn't this free flowing thing that they taught us in art class. It's in high school. It's not. It's, it's sciences. It's multi-level sciences. Art is multi-level sciences. Write that back to me. So if it's multi-level sciences, let's say you're taught you're somebody drew blood and they were getting their labs tested and they sent them to a lab. You think a lab that is also um, multi-level sciences, you think they just, you know, artistically go in and try to you know, whatever they felt like doing, whatever, it's not, it's not sensical even to talk about it. It makes no sense. There's a certain step, there's a certain amount of steps a, a, a scientist in a blood lab or, um, you know, I don't know what they're called. They're just, what are they called? The people who work at a lab, um, uh, they have to follow in order to retrieve the right kind of information in order to, to complete the process. So how is art any different if art is actually multi-level sciences? You've got perspective, you've got light on form, you've got anatomy, you've got design. Art and design are a science. This is a science. Art has been around long enough and designing clothes and designing colors and uh, matching colors and designing backgrounds and photography, that is also a science. Photography is a science. So you guys just go in doing whatever you want, thinking the universe because, oh, you're inspired and you've called yourself an artist, is going to just make things work out for you. That's not how it works. Because um, there's just too many sciences for the human mind to attempt to do without any guidance, planning, or sophistication of any kind. All right, so I've... Balance the head, and basically what I've done with the head is I've, you see before, so the because you tilted the head, let me just talk about what it is you did wrong. Let me, let me just x-ray the student's brain a little bit. So because you've always painted heads in three-quarter view, you thought just by tilting the head, you know, as long as you had this general sphere of the head, this, this looked proportionate or this looked okay especially because the artist in the post talked about how they wanted the side shaved. So they wanted to show more of that shaved side to complete the characterization. Um, it's not an, a, a weight category because the head itself, the skull, doesn't gain that much weight compared to the rest of the body. You lost volume at the top of the head. It was like the top of her head was shaved just around like a monk. And, uh, and this is after I did the so this is this is not a complete before and after this is just this recent liquify so when you think about this head now now that you've taken an appropriate step step layered the sciences and broken things down so your brain which is being overwhelmed by this task you've thrown at it your brain can now you know appropriately tackle this task Let's layer on another science. So let's find the symmetry line because the head, the face is symmetrical. So we can trust in the symmetry line that runs across the nose and, um, and the entire face over the nose, etc. All right, and then we know we want some of the other eye. We know that the eye can sit in this general vicinity, but it has to also be in three quarter view. So let's enable the face you had now and adjust it according to this. It's already looking better because we deleted that other cheek that was just denying gravity. And basically when you guys show the other cheek, so let's say you know you have a basic three quarter view of a car, all right? So you have a basic car. 
I'm not the best car artist, so bear with me. All right. Basically just drew Mr. Bean's car. All right. So this is a car basically in three-quarter wheel. Um, and what you guys do is instead of letting the other wheel just sit in the back somewhere, what you guys do is you guys lift the, the little cover the bender over the whatever it's called over the wheel and then you lift the wheel itself so that we can see the wheel. Does this make sense? Does it make sense? <laughs> I can make my voice even higher. No, it does not make sense. You guys don't know how to trust that if you could just let it go and let the head disappear as the face rotates because in your brain up until this point you have always drawn a symmetrical face. Things have always been equal on either side, equal reflection. So when you guys rotate, you guys think that it's just, and then side view nose and like that. And so when you're doing an extreme three quarter view, you guys think, oh yeah, the nose just has to breach. So this is an extreme three quarter view. You guys are just, you're, you just refuse to let go of this part that just needs to just be let go. It needs to hide. It needs to rotate out of view just like we did in the model. That point eventually in the greater animation of things disappears. All right, by the way, this is Portrait Studio. It's currently on sale on my website, istabak.com, if you guys are interested in it. And it's a reference um, generating software. And uh, when you guys look at three quarter views and references, because you have issues with with letting go so you, this is your weak spot let's say it's like your weak point it's your weak part you know you're going to not see that this part is rotating away get that you refuse to let it go in your references and when you see it in a reference you don't actually see it it's an actual blind spot in your brain so this is a beginner mistake blind spot that you guys have. There are other blind spots, um, but this is a big one. That three-quarter view rotation, you don't actually see it disappearing in a three-quarter view. And everybody has this. Every artist has gone through this. I have gone through this. Professional artists who I have critiqued also refuse to let go of that far side as it rotates away. And that's why I wanted to focus on this today because I've never really gone into it. This is an insanely, insanely, um, like it's a pandemic, you know, I hate that word now, but that's, that's technically what's, what's happening across all artists. We are all refusing to let go. So in essence, extreme three quarter view can be done as a side view first. So that you could actually in your brain accept the fact that it is a piece you add on behind. Did you hear what I just said? It goes on behind it. What is this? I unlocked the layer. Why are you? Thank you. All right. So see this? It goes behind. It goes behind. So this is a layer in front. This is foreground. This is background. This is something you guys don't know how to let go of. Just let it go. Make it go behind it. So in this piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the three quarter view. Now I'm going to layer the sciences. I'm going to get the background out of the way. Again, we're, de we're, we're delaying access to that far part until we've perfected the front piece. And then we have, I think I deleted it, but we have it there. So now I'm going to liquefy and set up this Hmm, I wanted it connected. I didn't want to. That's fine. Let me liquefy it first, connect it, and do it later. All right, so we're going to, again, layer the sciences. So we've separated some sciences from each other. So we are, let's take a look at the reference. So look at the eyebrow line when we rotate this way. It's closer to the eyes here, but when we rotate, it's further. So the line is here, the eyes are here, and when we rotate, 
they're closer together. So we get to see more of the space in between them, not just because of the shadow, but there's more space in between them. So the eyebrow line is right here. All right, so maybe I could do that actually with, um, with this instead. So we've got, that's okay, we'll do it this way. So we've got eyebrow, eyebrow. Okay, and then we're gonna rotate away Look at how much eyebrow space. It's just all upper, lower, upper eye, lower eyebrow. Look how much space that is. So when you guys put the eyebrows in, again, you do it as if you are looking at it from front view. Because that's the only type of face you know how to paint. Because that's the only place you have mileage. It's where you're comfortable. So your brain helps you retrieve information to complete this strange task you've given it. Your, your brain up until this point in your life was only charged with keeping you fed and safe and all of that. And all of a sudden you're asking it to do this intricate task, which is paint a face. Why would you want to do that? The brain says, I'm just here to keep you alive. But then your, your cerebral cortex or whatever demands those intellectual pursuits. And now all of a sudden, this thing that you're not really good at, it's trying to answer that question for you. It starts giving you whatever information it has on the subject. So art is about mileage. It's a habit you have to build. It's, it's, it's you know, you, you have to understand that your brain cannot provide you with information you have not provided for it. Write that back. So if the only thing you have great mileage in, the only thing you have decent mileage in is a front view, it's only going to give you front view information. And then not just that, you've given it a three-quarter low angle. That's two angles you're not good at. A low angle with the nose upturned and a three-quarter view that you've attempted to do while you have only ever done front view or mostly done front view. Oh, it's right. this is me attempting to do the three-quarter view. This is why I was doing it because I don't have experience with it. You, good, good, you did that, but you did it as an illustration, which is a big no-no. This is the cardinal rule. Stop trying to do masterpieces as a study. Stop trying to sneak it out of the responsibility of your, of your, of your studies, of your practice that's expected. Stop trying to make a portfolio piece after, out of every single new study you do, because what that's doing, it's slowing your, your mileage down. If it slows down your mileage, oh God, we're going to have to wait for another illustration for you to just do another three-quarter view. What if it was just a grayscale image that you could just, you know, quickly output and get over it and go on to the next one? You know, what if that's how you guys thought about your portraits, about your studies? But no, everything has to be turned into a masterpiece. God forbid you guys just bite the bullet and, and just do what you have to do the right way because uh, there's a pressure and the pressure comes from scrolling through Instagram. Look at what everybody does and look at what I'm not doing. Look at what everybody does. I want to get good. I want to get to where they are. This is a female. They wrote in the illustration um, sub submission, so that's why I'm enlarging the eye. The eye was too small anyway for a man. So I'm going to keep turning every one of my studies, which I need to do to get to their minimal just visual skill level, like what they can see out of art, um, let alone what they can do, because those are two different, you know, skills. Just to get to their level of seeing fundamentals and calling them out and knowing which ones they are, I have to do studies. But no, 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 no. In order for me to feel valid, like I exist, like I'm a valid member of society, I have to keep posting all the time, making posts on Instagram. I got to keep that going and I got to make art and I got to be successful and I got to win the capitalist dream and I got to make it to Hollywood and I got to, oh, I got to do it all. So you know what? This study, which is only one of the one billion studies I'm going to do to perfect the three quarter view portrait, I'm going to turn it into an illustration just so I could satisfy that inner anxiety to become an artist ASAP. No, you're not going to be an artist today. You're not going to be a, a pro tomorrow. You're not going to do it. 
um, by Christmas. You know, I know everybody's like, by Christmas, I'm gonna just fucking do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it done by Christmas. I'm just basing it off what I should I say, the shit I used to say. Oh man, I was ridiculous when I was a kid. I used to make all kinds of ridiculous rules and ridiculous goals and ridiculous uh, expectations on myself. I spent my artistic childhood absolutely hating myself. I hated myself because I was just not a pro yet. I had no business even being a pro. Like I wasn't even wise enough to be to be a to be a valid member of a design team back when I was like 18, 20. I was just enjoying learning fundamental. I, I should have been enjoying learning fundamentals, but no, I put so much pressure on myself. Back then there was a different kind of pressure. It wasn't just necessarily Instagram, but God forbid it was the deviant art. But God forbid I had an uh, Instagram back then. It would have ruined my life. And that's why I'm doing this speech today. Because you guys have Instagram and it is ruining your lives. And art station is and looking at other people's galleries is you guys are destroying your artistic process because you're under so much more pressure than any of us were, any of us 30 year olds, millennials were, because you were facing this unbelievable mammoth, this this unbelievable beast of social media that you ha you are competing with daily, which is horrifyingly unrealistic because you are looking at a global collective art body, which as a millennial growing up, I didn't have to deal with that. And you guys are under so much expectation, so much more because you are comparing your tiny little life against 8 billion other lives. Obviously, it's not the total volume, but there are so many artists on Instagram. There is not a single, you know, they're, they're, you, looking at all of them. You could sit there and look through all of them and it will not help you improve. And I've talked about this before and ranted about this before. You guys are destroying your art development because you are being exposed to way too much art. So uh, please be aware that you are turning every single map every single study into a masterpiece because you labor under the illusion that it will make you feel better in the face of this beast and i'm here to tell you it will not you're still gonna feel like shit about your art because you delayed your process that much longer you delayed your studies that much longer because you turned it into a masterpiece so you can feel better about yourself that's the solid truth. That's the truth you guys sign into this stream to hear. All right. So please stop doing that to yourselves. Because um, it's causing some unforgivable mistakes and fundamentals in your illustrations that could have easily been avoided with trace over diagrams, simple planning, um, just taking some time to, to look at, you know, a reference and break it down, maybe layer the sciences a little bit so you're not overwhelmed with the amount of layers you have to do, um, you know, that you have to manage the head tilt, the hair, the color, the skin tone, the three quarter view, the rotation, the stacking, none of that was intact, none of it, because you were trying to do more than you could. Do. And I'm not just going to say, oh, you tried to bite off more than you could chew. Let me just tell you the, the, the quick, quick uh, critique and, um, and call it done. It's not that simple because I have to go into your psyches and figure out why the hell you're rushing your, your studies. Look at the background color you chose. Look at that. The solid truth is that only a, a noob is going to pick a background color like that when trying to pull off colors like this. What is that? That's a sign that you have zero studies for light environment in your in your in your uh, journey. What is that? What the heck is that? Gray? But what's where all the colors? Where are all the colors coming from? That's bad matching. This is bad colors. So not only are your colors bad, but you, you know you're doing uh, perspective you can't manage. You're doing cre character design you can't manage. I don't care if this is, you know, this isn't a channel where I have to cradle your sense of artistic self. That's not my business. That's your parents' business or something. You know, that's not my, I'm a teacher. I'm going to teach you what you did wrong and why it looks bad. 
So I'm not here to be your, your motivational speaker or something like that. Um, or, you know, your feel good channel. I'm not a feel good channel. Because nothing about this feels good. You know, nothing about being told you're studying in exactly the wrong way and you're an insecure mess browsing through Instagram. None of hearing that feels good. None of hearing that is going to feel good to anyone. It doesn't feel good telling you guys this. Imagine that. It doesn't feel good telling you guys. Y'all are stuck in noob stage and you can't get out because you're even worse off than we millennials were because we didn't even have Instagram and you poor fools do. So none of that feels good telling you that you're doing it all wrong. But, but, it'll feel good once you start doing it right. It'll, it'll make sense once you start breaking down your reference before you start. You can still try your, your, your little illustrations and your stories and whatnots. You could do them, but do them with a little bit more planning. Do them with a little bit more focus on... You know, hey, you know, I'm trying to basically build a house here. Would I try to build an entire house without a blueprint? No. So why am I trying to do that with a portrait? Why am I trying to structure a living thing, an actual thing with multi-level sciences to its process, to its existence? Why am I trying to pull it off with like little to no reference? Isn't the idea that I had worth it? Isn't that moment of inspiration, that dream I had of a girl with kind of like smoke coming out, she's kind of made of smoke, that idea you had, wasn't it worth it to just do a little bit of research, just a smidgen? It is. So none of this feels good to hear, but that's just, it's just rough medicine, but it's still medicine. And if I hurt your feelings, I'm not sorry, because this is what you need to hear, because I know it's going to benefit you. All right, so you can see everything that I did. Could pretty much track every every decision I made so I'm gonna backtrack through them all all right so before way too much stuff to, to be managed by a mind completely unaware of the fundamental rules and the science involved in pulling off a perspective like this and then I separated that far side deleted that far tile uh, tire of the car sorry and um, and then I corrected the neck a little bit, made the neck less, you know, like that, and uh, just showed the, the, the length of the neck. And then I deleted the face so that I could just figure out the head alone. All right, so I did. All right, so before, less size on the head in the back, more size at the top, slender neck, wider shoulders. And I found the symmetry line just so it's embedded in my mind. And then I went into liquify and corrected. Again, deleting the far side of three quarter view. Crap, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm really sick. Um, deleted the far side of the, so look at the eyebrow by the way. Deleted the far side of the eye. Sorry about the sniffling. Um, and then corrected this. Using my reference, the eyebrow needs to be further away from the uh, from the eye. Gave the nose some volume. Let go of the far side. Very simple decisions. Very simple choices. Guided by science. A trust in the perspective of, of the science in the perspective. All right. So not only did you lose perspective, anatomy, uh, the read, you lost the beauty. There, this wasn't beautiful. The before had none of that female read in it because you were you you lost everything. Let's just have you have some symmetry before we throw in beauty. Jeez, it you know it's a lot to manage. Just just trying to keep symmetry in. All right, so. Um, I'm going to do a full before and after now. Before. After. Sorry, one moment. I'm just going to uh, blow my nose real quick. So any questions at all?
Okay, we might have caught her sickness. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's just temperature drops because of my stupid thyroid and the temperature outside has been up and down. Hot as hell in the daytime and freezing at night. Um, so, uh, so before, after, before, after. So we could add more levels of beauty. We could beautify her even more. Um, we could give the nose a little bit of a slender shape. We could give the upper lip a bit more volume. You guys have it so much worse off than we did. Because people love to say, oh, kids these days are all, you know, kids these days got everything. Back then we were blah, blah, blah. But we had it so easy back then because if I had had Instagram and all that BS, I don't think I'd be here teaching you guys. There's so many distractions that stop development. And social media is a, is a disease. It's, it's, it's epically, you know, damaging to you guys because you guys are spending tons of time on it. For back then, we used to, I used to sit down for hours and I used to meet the mileage requirement that I had to meet in order to become skilled at what I do. But you guys aren't meeting the mileage requirements. Write that back. You guys are not doing enough and you all want results and all my students in private tutoring want results. Everybody wants results and you guys have lost the concept of exactly how much mileage is expected. How many hours are expected? It's a lot. It's not as much as you think, but it's, it's more than you're doing. All right, and you guys get frustrated and you want results and you want changes ASAP and uh, and you want to feel good about yourself and you want to make league splashes and it's not going to work out if you guys are not applying the mileage necessary. I'm going to throw in a thicker lash line up here. Yes, how do you think we should go about that specifically? I mean the pressure of social media. Um, what you need to do is what humans are really shitty at, which is self-moderation. Humans are suck at it. This is what aliens look down on. They laugh at our science technology and they laugh at our self-control. Those are two things that if we just had self-control as a species, we'd evolve in like a hundred years. But anyway, we don't have any self-control. It's, it's our greatest weakness. Humans are ridiculous indulgers and forgetful. And so the best thing to do is, uh, is to just look at yourself. Tell your, first of all, talk to your brain because it actually works. It'll listen. Say, I don't, I want to put in an internal alarm system that tells me when I have just indulged too much in social media. You think it's work to sit down and you think it's a, like it's holy work, it's good work. You think it's mileage to sit down and look through Instagram posts for seven hours a day total. You think you're doing well? You're not. You're actually killing your art by doing that. So you need to build in this inner system that signals to you, hey, whoa, whoa, I have been sitting here for too long looking at this art for too long. I should be, that that work that I'm doing right now should be applied to actual mileage. I should be sketching. If I feel like arting, I will not attempt to fulfill that sense of mileage by looking through art on Instagram because you guys are doing that intentionally or unintentionally. You guys assume by looking through Instagram it's like mileage, like it's like it's meeting the mileage requirement or right? like you feel good about yourselves because you guys are looking at art. Oh, I'm looking at art, so I must be doing something right, right? No, you're distracting yourself in a very manipulative way because you are doing something art related, right? So therefore you're not doing something bad. Absolutely not. You're tricking yourself into thinking you're doing work when you're not even doing mileage anymore. You're not even getting better at what you're doing. There's zero, looking through Instagram has increased your fundamentals mileage by exactly zero. Think about it like that. Excessive gallery browsing, um, 
all of that oh it's great oh there will always be pieces to inspire you oh just graduate the fundamental stage it's waiting for you the art station galleries and instagram are waiting for you you don't have to look at them now because to look at them now is to start doing this all right you're rushing into attempting illustrations where you have no fucking business doing that right because you, you you're not studying right it's not it's inefficient studying and you're going to make those mistakes so to this artist i am indebted to you for submitting your work for today because we had we got a chance to look at this mistake and i hope that you know we can take out of this 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 massive lesson which is please slow down and start doing your studies there's no way around it there's no fast track I swear to God, if it costs seven thousand, ten thousand dollars to download fundamentals to DLC fundamentals, you motherfuckers would pay for that in a heartbeat. Because you guys are lazy. Because not you specifically, everyone, the entire humanity, wants to find shortcuts. If we could pay fifty thousand dollars to lose ten pounds, people would do that. People would just, oh man, they'd pay a million. They do. They get liposuction. <laughs> So it's, we are a lazy species and we try to find ways out of everything we do, out of the, the, the time responsibility, the time factor in getting better. And you are, that's working against you. And I'm sorry, it seems hopeless from where you are. But today, just from this speech today, you guys are moving forward already. You guys are already improving. So now that I have the structure, I'm gonna start applying some shadows. And um, and that background color, that abysmal value you chose, which is offensive <laughs> because the, it's not matched to anything. It's 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 just there, and it's not doing much. So I'm gonna just do something with it, maybe something like that. If you're gonna go artistic, fart artsy fartsy, fucking go for it, you know. I mean, a bold color like that looks nice. Actually, I really like the temperature as well. And. Um, and then I'm gonna just do a simple color wash on top, just to match all the values. Hmm. Maybe not. Maybe a darken. Um, I'm just trying to work with this whole, you know, album cover media look to the piece. It's just symbolic. Realism, really. Um, what do you guys say? Welcome to today's episode on the securities of the spread. Uh, so pretty much more actual work you put in, the better the results are in anything you do. Yeah. Instant gratification versus delayed reward. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, like I've seen people who are broke pay tons of tons of, you know, thousands of dollars to join some quick, you know, quick get 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 art good quick thing um, or or workshops and nothing's wrong. I'm not like, you know, channeling or referring to anyone or or, or, or you know, liposuction or getting surgeries to look prettier or, you know, it's just people do that stuff it's what it's what we do it's it's who we are we we want to find faster less painful ways to do stuff and uh unfortunately it's it's, it's the reason we're all upset because it never actually helped us so now that i did that i'm gonna just erase away anything where the light does reach just the tip of the nose right here. Just the light can reach that. And um, how do I know that? So I studied. And over here. So how did you study? Just over diagrams, um, mileage, just, just simply trying it. I threw a quarter of you sketching, lots of sketching. Um, looking at references, breaking those down. Simple cast shadow here. Master studies. I've done it all. 
You guys can do it too. There's no reason why you can't. Even people who, who, whose hands don't work have, have done stuff, you know, so there's no reason why you can't. And then as for the like the general design, um, I, I feel like you could have, if this is where the reference was, if this was the before, you know, going in, I'd probably just critique your um, lighting. I'd probably critique, like, what are you doing with the story? Is the character made of smoke as well? Don't let the shoulders kind of just hit the edge of the canvas like that. Um, what's technically, like, happening, if anything is. And um, I'm just going to just artistically smudge here and there just to make it seem like she's also smoke and like the eyes what's happening there what are you doing with that and I'm just letting some contrast sit up here so it's a lot of stuff to change but hopefully you got the idea and I feel like I could delete a little bit more of the farce I see how I didn't even like do anything else with the far side of the mouth because it's just not visible. And doing referencing has, um, and, and trace over diagrams taught me to just trust that process. So I don't need to show any more of the mouth. <coughs> There's a lot more to the lips we could do, but I, I'm running out of time. But hopefully today showed you guys a lot about what you guys are doing wrong. And um, so before, big changes, obviously, gigantic changes. But hopefully the way I broke it down for you uh, helped you understand why you were doing what you were doing. Maybe the smoke could be a bit brighter. Maybe that could be like a big... Like I'm just trying to save the illustration just as an illustration. What could you have been doing? Maybe the character could be glowing. That could be something you did. Um, the eyes, they seem to be like made out of something else. So like just go for it. It'll... It'll make it feel better. But let me just add the blue. Kind of like the skin glowing back at the, just to add to that smoke effect. Okay, everybody, any more questions at all? There's a lot more I could do, but I'm not going to fall into that. The amount of work and learning is still the same. Yeah, true. No worry about supplies, endless virtual sheets of paper at any size you want. That is something we had to worry about when we were growing up. I had to go and steal printer paper from the from the computer room. I go, I, oh, I learned how to get into the, computer, the printer. And <laughs> I would steal stack upon stack. And I'd come home and show my sister and it would open the bag and it would glow. I'd be so fucking happy. I'd, I'd walk home with a skip in my step because I knew there was a stack of paper in my bag. Bro, that was the, that was the shit. That was the time. And um, ugh, I just, I feel bad that I had to steal because I grew up in a really poor family. So I did not, nobody was going to buy me no art supplies. Um, so uh so I, I was master Prince of Persia thief. Like I would, I would, I would time <laughs> post recess. As soon as you hear the bell, I'd know all classes are empty and I'd go in there and take <laughs> it. I was so happy when I saw a stack of it. Now I could just go to the store and buy a bunch. I should probably do that soon. <laughs> Um, how to deal with the fact that you've spent 25 years of doing art and still struggling with fundamentals. You just haven't approached it right. You didn't waste time. Um, you just haven't approached it right. Um, it's not that art is not clicking. 
It's that there's a missing way of thinking that you don't have that art needs at the moment. It could be just the fact that you need to apply yourself to the technical aspect and not the artistic aspect. Um, and you need to trust in doing things without reference for a little while, meaning like you particularly core, I'm not talking in general, work a little too closely with your portrait studio model when doing faces. And um, maybe your note taking or information process, the information transfer process for you, it might be a bit of an issue. Plus, you know, disciplining yourself so you can have actually go in and do the work. Someone should make a movie. Um, my one's printed 100 copies in my resume. <laughs> and you use them to draw or just, you know, just abusing the school? <laughs> um, how should one go about studying color in environments? Um, like what kind of thought process would make this art choose a better background color? Uh, so this is a very stylistic piece. It's not necessarily something that I would say is an environment. Actual environments for illustrations, you need to study pictures of the times of the time of day. You need to like basically plain air studies teach you about light environment. Um, interior light environments, the same thing, like still lifes or other portraits. But it's about the time of day, the amount of light, the amount of light, the amount of color that light allows. But here, because it's artistic and expressive and you've just got a plain background, you can do whatever you want. You can diffuse shadows and edit it. You know, it's just like a Photoshop piece, um, Photoshop photo or something. So when you're studying how to, how to get better at studying environments, you have to study objects in open air in different times of the day and different weather. Um, so you can learn about what's appropriate as a background and what, what that does to shadows. That's a big concept. It's a big topic because there's so many versions of uh, an environment. I don't struggle putting in the work. I just found overwhelming to figure out what skills I need to work on. Many say work on fundamental, but uh, which fundamental should we work on and how should we train? Um... Your weakest fundamental is your is the one that's going to stick out the most. So whatever you're hearing the most from people critiquing you, there's nothing you can do without critique. None of this is possible without critique. That you can't critique yourself. I tried that. I tried that as a kid and I just did not get far. As soon as I started getting proper critique, I got better fast. So critique is the number one thing. Once you start hearing a regular or a common thing come back to you, oh, your recorder views look a little bit weird. You know, whatever people say. Even non-artists can critique you, by the way, because they know what realism is. When they, when they know what it looks like and what it doesn't look like when they see it. Um, uh, you will then know which fundamental it is you're dealing with. Weird three-quarter view or weird, you know, this looks off is, is just a sign that your perspective and anatomy have just collapsed. Um... And, uh, oh, the color, oh, it makes me sad. The colors are kind of dull. You know, the colors are dull. It means you just have no color harmony. There's no, nothing really happening in the scene with the colors. It's not entertaining. Um, so I'm just boosting the contrast a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's based off what you're getting back. Those are the fundamentals you should work with. The results of your pieces are reveal where your fundamentals are weakest. <clears throat> uh, procrastination I did that often instead of drawing I'm picking the topic for days watching videos and pics and spending even more research tools on how to use it um, yeah it can be procrastination it could be fear induced procrastination it could be laziness you guys are all dealing with laziness in this day and age um, it could be lack of motivation it could be depression because depression is an all-time high with everyone Depression is the real pandemic uh, right now. I mean, there's a real pandemic, but you know what I'm saying. In artists, um, depression is real. We all have some level of it. It didn't used to be that bad, I swear to God. But the more technology, the more social media took over our lives, the more people live fake lives through Facebook, the more depression we all develop because suddenly we were living our lives for Facebook and for um for social media. Our lives became not ours anymore. We lost our lives trying to display our lives and 
you know, you're not, you have no value unless your gallery is constantly outputting solid, cute shit all the time that looks good. And that's, it's just a depression inducing storm. It's, it's, it's a lot of people are dealing with that right now. So remember, there's a lot of reasons why someone can be procrastinating and depression is one of them. Fear of failure is huge. Um, my mom is ruthless with her critiques. <laughs> it's the rack. That's our mom. Oh, you mean me? It's not uh, popping enough. Yeah. It says our mother of dragons. Feels nice to be a dragon. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone for coming to today's class. I hope it helped you. I hope it showed you you're not alone. Um, and I hope it showed you that, you know, there's... It, a year is going to pass by anyway, and if you're 18, 20, 21, 22, these are the garbage years of your life. Nothing really happens. I'm, just take it from me. I'm telling you. I'm 31. I know what the garbage years look like. Those are the shitty years. Nature gave you those years so you could decide who you're going to be. You're not who you are going to be right now. You are just in the process. You are in the chrysalis right now. You are you are just a blob of nothing. You can decide who you want to be. You don't have to be this crazy gallery person because I don't know what who you follow on Instagram. Stop following them. Stop comparing yourself to them. Right now you're just living the whatever years, the ugh years that you could you could, you, you could we could spend all of them on studying and not kill yourself, not not kill your development. Not, you know, you don't have to start, spend your 20s partying and, and all of that shit. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be the fun years. The fun years are in your 30s, trust me. And I'm not saying you have to wait till you're 30 to live your life. It's late 20s. You'll, you'll just start looking at your art and be like, wow, I did that. Um, or early, you know, mid 20s. But right now, if you're like 18, 16, 21, 22, this is just for those younger ones, younger members in our community. You you don't have to be in a rush to make art and gallery pieces. It's okay to just do studies. It's okay that you're not a superstar on Instagram. It's okay. Stop following Kylie Bitchface and stop looking at other people's art and start just looking at who you are and what fundamentals you know so that you can use them later when your storytelling is more mature. Depression will get worse if you keep feeding it and stop killing your artistic process because nothing will depress you more than five years passing and you didn't get good. And um, you could have used all that time to just do some, what, like a hundred three quarter views is all you really need before your brain just gets it. So. So just uh, focus on that. Focus on the good news. That's good news. I come bearing good news to you. I come bearing good news that you will get good. You will be amazing. You will get good at art. You just have to do the mileage now because these are the easy years. It gets harder as you get older. And not art, life. And, um, and just focus on getting all of that mileage out of the way now while you're an egg. So that you can enjoy it when you're when you're when you're conscious enough to enjoy it. Um, to submit your work for critique hour, like you saw today, go to isterback.com and click on the Reddit icon here. Sorry, I was so sick today. I was just not myself. <clears throat> um, and uh, just this is where everything goes. Um, so submit your art. You can get critiqued. All kinds of wonderful people here. Um, very very little. Uh, uh, you know, chance, uh, very little pieces not get, zero pieces get zero critiques, so everyone gets critiqued. If you are getting no critiques, because nobody knows you, and people critique each other as they get to know each other, so even if you think you're not skilled enough to critique someone's work, go, go, go into it. Critique it. Maybe it's something you, that you saw that nobody else could see, and if it's something that somebody else saw, two people now, you know, showed that person where their fundamentals are, are lacking, so it's all good. Go in there, critique each other, and then they'll come back and critique you, and you'll, your art was just going to get better. Um, the Halloween challenge, ooh, it's going to be out soon. It's actually really fun. Um, I am going to send out the resource pack soon, but I can basically describe it now. I'm going to be giving you references that you have to pull from and for your illustration. It, and you can do whatever you want with it as long as you're working with those illustra those references. And the winner gets to join me in a critique hour and do a critique hour with me. Isn't that awesome? 
Um, and uh, they're going to just be talking with me, critiquing the piece as I critique it, giving me their thoughts, what they want me to change, and they're just going to paint through me. I'm going to be on a Discord call with them, and they're going to, and then we're both going to be um, on the call together during critique hour, which is going to be super fun. We're going to do it on Halloween, around Halloween. So like Thursday the 28th, we'll probably do it. That'll be the due date. So you guys have a little under a month to do them. Um, and uh, I wish it was like a little bit closer, but it's okay. And yeah, it's going to be really cool. So I will send out the illustration resource pack sometime this weekend um, or sometime before the 30th. I've just been so busy. It's been a crazy week and I've also been sick, but I have it written down. I just have to... Um, uh, refine the references I give you out. Uh, and uh, there's going to be texture requirements as well. So you're gonna have a certain number of textures you have to apply to the piece um, in order to qualify as a winner. Uh, so to, to be considered as one of the, uh, from the choice of winners. Um, one winner, <laughs> choice of candidates. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. Purchase Studio is on sale on my store if anyone's interested in using the tool I used today, which is really helpful. Um, and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. If you've learned something today, if you want to keep this channel going for future generations, um, you can always join me on Patreon. Really appreciate it. You don't have to join for a lot. It's just $1 a month. That's it. Um, and it's, if everybody joins in on that, then it's a lot. You know, I'd rather $1 from 20 people than $20 from one person who, who's having is you know trouble keeping that up because, you know, I'd hate to ask for so much, especially during a financial crisis like like right now in the world. Um, so it's just $1 a month from everyone. And I think that's a small enough amount. And again, uh, I don't mean to insult anyone, even if that's too much for some people, I completely understand. I completely get it. Um, thank you everyone for coming. I will see you guys uh, on Thursday, hopefully if my health allows, at, uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Love you guys very much. Bye.